Hey, what is up YouTube? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the detangle sop. And I use that sop in order to make this spaghetti ball that we see here. And what it does is if you have self-intersecting geometry or if you have an, another collision, what, what it does is it takes those or that intersecting geometry and it pushes it apart from each other so that it is no longer intersecting. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is what we're gonna be creating. I already have it, all the notes laid out. Uh, just for reference, but we're going to actually build this from scratch. So I'm going to back out and make a new geometry network. And we're going to start off with a sphere. Now, what we're going to do later on is we're going to make it so that this, so that all the spaghetti strands that we have are going to collide with the ground. And in order to do that, they can't be intersecting initially. So what we're going to do is I'm going to raise this up to one. And so now it won't be intersecting with the ground. And that's going to come in handy later on. And I'm also going to change this to a polygon. I'm going to change the frequency to just like 30 so that we have a smoother circle. Now, in order to actually create the spaghetti, what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole bunch of semicircles and we're going to copy them onto the sphere, onto the sphere. But we want to do it from the center point. So I'm going to drop down a transform node. And the problem is, is that if we scale it, it's not scaling it from the center. And I actually made a cool preset called Centroid and it just grabs the center. Um, and so now if I scale it, you can see that it does that, but I'll, I'll show you how to do that manually. So let me just undo that. Um, what, what I'm gonna show you how to, what I'm showing you right now, you can just save that as a preset. So like once you're done doing it, you can come here and then you can do, uh, where is it? save as preset and then it'll show up right here at the bottom so you don't have to do it all the time. Cause like I use this, I use this all the time and I got tired of typing it out. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to center the, the what's called the pivot translate. So if we type in centroid and then it needs to know which geometry. So we're just gonna do zero. And then we're gonna do D underscore and then X and they need to be capitalized. And so that's going to actually grab the center, but of course it's on zero for that axis. So that's fine. Uh, so we're going to copy that and then what would it go? Oh, whatever. I just uh, control Z that. And then we're going to paste it in the middle one. And then we're going to paste it again. And what I'm doing is I'm just hitting tab to go to the next one. And so obviously for the center or the middle, it's going to need to be Y because that's the Y axis. And then for this, it's going to need to be Z. And now, um, now it's in the center of our, now if I click this right here, you can see that now the, the handle is at the center of our geometry. And then you could just go up here and hit save as preset. And then you could just do what I did. So now whatever you need to center the pivot, you could just come here and then you could just select centroid and it'll automatically snap to the center. All right. So now we're going to scale this down. I'm just going to go to like 0 0.05. So that's really, really small. And then I'm going to drop a scatter node and the amount that you set for the force uh, total count, that's gonna be the amount of strands that we have. Um, we're gonna keep it pretty small for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead with 100. And then we're gonna do copy to points. And I'm gonna wire, it says target points. So the target points needs to go into there. And I'm gonna create a circle. And let me just look at my other screen for a second. All right. So I'm going to switch this to the ZX axis and I'm going to make this a hundred divisions so that it's smoother and let's set it to open arc and I'm just going to do like 300 degrees. All right, perfect. And so now that is a semicircle. Uh, the reason why I did this is because like with the spaghetti simulation, I wanted like the ends to be flying around. Cause so like I, I didn't want it to be a perfect circle. So that's why I did that. Oh, uh, let's see. And then we're going to take this and we're going to copy a whole bunch. But of course, um, they're all in the exact same location. And that's just because we need to randomize uh, the rotation. Uh, we don't need to rotate this. or We don't need to randomize the scale, though, just the rotation for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a node called attribute randomize. And we're going to randomize the orient attribute. So we're going to switch that to orient and it's a quaternion. So that needs to be four dimensions. So let's go ahead and switch that to four and we can already see that it's looking much better, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this to minus one, minus one, minus one, uh, just to give it more variation. And that is looking a lot closer to what we want. 
Uh, let me take this sphere node. I'm actually just going to drag it out a little bit further. And we're going to use a ray sop to project these circles back onto the sphere just to make sure it matches it a lot more closely. So we're going to plug the left input into that copy to points and the right input into the sphere. And we're going to switch it to minimum distance. And now they are projected onto here and I don't want to see this annoying guide. So I'm going to turn it off and we can see that it's a little bit jagged and that's just because the what's called we're race, we're raying it onto the sphere and the topology isn't super high. So I think I'm just going to drop a subdivide. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, yeah, you can see that's a lot smoother already. Um, I think we're actually going to do this one more time or repeat that process one more time. So I'm going to drop down a smooth node just to smooth it a little bit. And then I'm going to resample it. And let me check my other screen. So uh, I had this set to 100. So instead of maximum segment length, I'm going to do maximum segments and I'm going to set it to 100. And I think the the reason why I'm going to use another resample is just to make sure the spacing between the points is even. Uh, I think they, they already look pretty even now, but I'm just going to throw it in just in case. But yeah, okay, so I think that's just a little bit better. Uh, I think the reason why I had it on my other screen is because when I was working before um, on my actual spaghetti project, the, what's it called, uh, when it was at this stage right here before the resample, um, because I had like random uh, P scale, I had a random P scale, so some of my spaghetti strands were bigger. And so when it projected it back on, the distance between each point kind of got messed up. So I had to resample it just to make sure that each point had the same distance. But it seems to be fine now, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, so like I said, we're going to repeat the same process. So I'm going to copy that race op. And um, actually what I did was I alt clicked it and dragged it while you're holding alt. And then if you release it there, it's going to copy it again. And uh, it is plugged into the right space. All right, nice. And actually, it didn't really seem to do too much, but I'm just going to, um, like I said, I'm just copying my other network in what's I, last time I needed to actually protect it to make it match more evenly. But it seems to be fine now. Um, so we need a rest position. The way the detangle sop works, it needs a rest or it needs an old P position. Uh, let me actually just drop it down so I can show you. So detangle right here, it says previous position. And it says the incoming uh, P attribute is considered the new deformed version of the geometry. And it says it's considered to be collision free. And what I assume that means is when it says collision free, I don't think it means from self intersections, but it means collision free from the collision geometry. Like if you add like another geometry for it to collide with, not self collisions. And the reason why um, is because you'll, as you'll see in just a second, that it actually does work even with self intersections. Uh, well, let's see, what do I have next? All right, and so remember how I was saying that we want it to collide with the ground? Now we're going to actually move it. Well, actually, we didn't add the rest. I forgot to do that. All right, so I'm going to add a rest position. There we go. And so that's our, our rest attribute right there. And so now we're going to move it down. And so I'm going to move it down just so that the bottom is slightly going through where the, our ground plane is going to be. So that's looking good. And then we're going to also need to give it a P scale attribute just so that it knows how thick each each uh, curve is. So I'm going to do an attribute wrangle and I'm going to plug that in. Let me check my other screen 0.04. All right, so I'm just going to do an F at P scale equals 0.04 and then put a semicolon. Uh, that's perfect. And now we're going to use the detangle sop finally getting to that part. But I think instead of just connecting the, the detangle stop, we're going to actually use um, what's called a for loop. And that way we can apply it multiple times. And so if I type in for for loop, and then we're going to do with feedback. And so now you can do it multiple times. So when it says 10 iterations, basically that means is that's going to it's going to repeat this 10 times. We're going to put the detangle sop inside here and repeat it 10 times to make sure we get rid of all the collisions. So let's go ahead and connect that together. And I'm going to drop, what, do I have a detangle? Oh yeah, there it is right up there. So I'm going to plug that in and I'll put the um, display flag on the other end. And the reason why it's not working is because we need to give it a previous position. 
and that's why we laid down the rest node before. So if we just type in rest right here, um, we can see that now it's actually working. And wow, that's actually quite a lot of displacement. So I'm going to come here to the P scale and I'm just going to drop it down to like 0 0.02 uh, for now. And so that's a little bit less hectic. And let's see. I'm going to create a grid now because we want it to collide with the ground. And we just want to make sure that what I said before is that it needs to not be colliding. The rest position needs to not be colliding. So we can see that um, it's not colliding because we raised it up before. So this should work out fine. So if I come here, it says collision geometry and I plug this in. And now I go back here. Now we can see, uh, let me put the template flag on there. So now we can see that it's colliding with that nicely. Now it is a little bit jagged, but we're going to smooth it later on. Uh, let's see, where's my resample node? Actually, let's just go here. And I'm going to do 150 segments just to add a little bit more resolution. All right, nice. And I think for the iterations, I'm, for now, I'm just going to set it down to like five because I think that will be enough. And once again, let's add another resample node. Uh, but this time, I'm going to give it a much larger amount. I'm going to go like 300. Um, actually, I might even go to 450 for now. But this time we're gonna where it says straight edges, we're gonna change that to subdivision curves. So it's gonna be a lot smoother than it was before. Oh yeah. And I think I'm actually just gonna change this even more. So instead of uh, 0 0.01, let's go to or 0 0.02, let's go to 0 0.01. And that's looking pretty nice. But I think I'm actually gonna go to the original scatter node and let's just set this to higher amount. And if you want additional smoothing, you can definitely add that. Um, so let's go up here and then let's actually make the P scale 0 0.015. Actually, let me just go to, let me go to three actually. So that's really big. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a smooth node and then connect that in and then have the resample. And so now that's going to be a lot more smooth. So that's actually looking closer to what I had before which is good and now let's just add a little bit of color variation into each primitive so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop down a sort node and i'm just going to randomize each primitive number so where it says primitive sort i'm just going to do random and we'll see actually i'll disable it for now and show you what it does later uh, so now I'm going to drop down enumerate and we're going to create an ID attribute for each primitive. And I'm going to switch it from index to ID. And I actually want this to be a point attribute. So I'm going to do attribute promote. And well, the reason why I'm starting off as a primitive attribute, because we want each point to have the same number. And so in order to do that, so we're creating ID for each uh, spaghetti strand um, and so we, we're going to do that for each curve but then we're going to promote it to a point attribute so that each point on that curve has the same value and so now I'm going to do attribute promote and then from primitive to point and then we're going to go ahead and select ID and let's see what else do we have here uh, I'm going to drop down a color node And let's just do ramp from attribute and I'm going to switch it to, oh, here's the gear icon. I'm just going to do white water for now. And then we're going to use the attribute that we just created. And sometimes depending on, on how your setup is, um, what's called if the randomization doesn't look good, uh, if it looks too uniform, that's why I use this sort because it basically just randomizes all the, the point. It randomizes the primitive number. And right here, you're generating your ID based off of the primitive number. And so it just gives a little bit more randomization. So let me, um, the problem is, is that this is from a range of zero to one, but we're going to have much bigger value. We're going to be, it's going to be from uh, zero to 199 because we have 200 primitives. And basically what enumerate does is just assigns, it, it assigns each curve a value. Um, it propagates it from like zero 
to however many primitives you have. And so since it starts at zero, it's going to be from zero to 199 since we have 200 primitives. And so we can actually just get the primitive number. And since it's 199, because instead of from one to 200, it's going to be from zero to 199, we can just type in this expression, which is n prims, which basically what it does is it just grabs a number of primitives and we're going to subtract one. Um, and so if we middle mouse click this, it should say 199, which is exactly what it says. And so now we're getting um, a random color for each strand. And let me disable the sort. You can see it just gives it a random value. Um, when I was working on my spaghetti project, uh, the colors were too uniform. Like for some reason, I guess when I scattered them, um, it's like all the blues were together and then it was like white and it wasn't random. So I just used the sort to randomize it. But in this case, it seems like we actually didn't need it. But regardless, we'll just leave it on for now. And then uh, that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, of course, if you want to mesh it, you can use a sweep node. And let me plug that in. Um, let's go to construction. You want to disable transform using curve point attributes. And I forgot to actually switch that. So we're going to switch it to round tube. There we go. Um, yeah, just just so you know, if if we if this was on, this is what it would do. It's basically just using the p scale uh, attribute that we provided to give it the radius. But let's not do that. Let's just turn disable that and go back here and actually just change this to something that we want. And uh, if you want to add an end cap, you can. And so that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I how I built that spaghetti ball. Now, of course, I did other things because I ran it through vellum simulation, a few few things like that. Um, but you can feel free to change different things as you like. Like if I go here, well, actually, let me put the display flag back on the color and go back up here to the scatter. And I could put it to something like a thousand. Now, of course, the higher that you go, the longer it's going to take, especially since, since it's going through a for loop. So it has to like do everything multiple times. Um, but you can you can change the P scale to make it displace more, do a whole bunch of different things. And also there's another option on the detangle sop. It says resolve all collisions. Sometimes uh, you might want to turn that on. It'll make the solve a little bit more accurate. All right. Well, I think that's it for now. Yeah. If you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, have a good day. Thanks.